Hello, my name is Hans George Campbell, and today I thought I'd show you guys this classic Antec 300 case. I also want to talk about why this is the best design case of all time. It is the perfect choice for your legacy PC build. classic Antec 300 versatile mini tower case. Um, it is a perfect choice for a Windows 98 second edition build uh, or a Windows XP build. It can also be used for building modern systems but this uh, this, case, this case is better suited for um, legacy PC builds and you'll see why in a moment. But this shows the three five and a quarter inch dry bays, your two USB 2.0 ports. I believe this is your microphone, this is your headphone jack, your reset switch, your power switch. Um, yeah. Okay. And that is the, the side of the box. Right there, I don't know how well you can see that, but that's the side of the box. And the dimensions, okay, this case weighs approximately 16 pounds. The dimensions are 18 inches high, or tall, 18.3 inches deep, um, or long, and 8.1 inches wide. Okay, so those are your dimensions um, of this case. And then the back of the box is that there. It's the back of the box showing the front, inside, the rear. Um, so after a quick um, commercial break, we'll take the case out of the box and take a look at the case. Windows XP, the number one selling and most popular version of Windows. So many people today, including the United States military, still use Windows XP. But why? Why do so many people love this graphics user interface? Well, that's what we're going to find out in this special series of videos here on the Hans Campbell Show. Windows XP. here shall we um, gotta be careful with this classic box it's very hard to find this case today very hard to find this classic case today and it commands very high prices on eBay I keep a permanent ad up on Craigslist um, that I pay fifty dollars for these cases loose or, you know, 60 to 80 bucks for them, new in their box. 
I keep a permanent add up on prices. I'm always looking for these cases. And you'll see why in a moment. They're really good cases. They really are. Especially for a legacy PC build. They're great for that. Okay, so let me put um, that right there, and we'll open up the box. Okay, all right. Okay, yeah, I paid um, $129.12. That's what I offered to the eBay seller, and he accepted my offer. Plus sixteen dollars and eighty-eight cents for shipping. Well, he he was right up here in uh, I think the mid part of you know uh, Bellevue, Washington is where the the, uh, the seller is from, and so that's why the shipping is is low because he lives close to me. But yeah, these cases they command high prices because they are one of the best cases you can use for a legacy PC build. Um. So I'm going to put that there, and it's got, well, I'm going to go ahead and dump the case out like this, okay, and hopefully, yeah, that was a good way to do it, I like that way of doing it, and I'll put this, oh shit, don't hit my leg. <laughs> I'll put this over here, okay, and um, I don't want to drop the case, that's the damn shot, I would not want to drop this beautiful case. It's got really good packing material, it's got this real dense foam right here, so it's protected really well against getting damaged, you know, it's protected really well. Um, I'll throw in there. I want to hang on to that receipt so I know how much I paid for that. And then you get the um, the user manual right there. User manual. The Antic 300 case. I'll throw that in the box. <laughs> and then we'll remove the protective bag covering and uh, okay all right okay so that's the, the bag original shipping bag hang on to this box. Okay, so here's the case. Um, right there, that's the case. Make sure it's centered on the camera, you know, as you can see it. Um, it's a real nice case. It's made out of some good quality. Uh, I don't know if it's steel. It feels like steel, but it may be like a really nice durable aluminum. It's a pretty, pretty nice case. Um, <clears throat> let me get my pointer. Yeah, it's a nice case. Um, here are your three five and a quarter inch dry bays. These are your two USB 2.0 uh, slots there, or connectors there, or ports. I believe that's your... Um, microphone jack, and that's your headphone jack, your reset switch, <clears throat> and your power switch. Now the power switch on this can go out after a few years, but don't throw out the case because you can easily replace the, the actual switch. You can buy those on eBay and, and other places on the internet. You can replace the switch.
that this button is connected to. So if your power switch ever goes bad, and it will after a few years of use, that's a common problem with the Agic 300 case, don't throw the case away just because of that. Just replace that switch. It can be replaced. Okay? And then uh, you can add up to two 120 millimeter fans, and we'll take a look at that in more detail in a moment. Um, the one side is just, uh, you know, your blank side. It comes off. We'll take both sides off when we take a look at the inside of the computer. That's the other side. You can hook up a what? 120 millimeter fan here for blowing any graphics card. Um, 120 millimeter exhaust fan here in the rear. And a 140 millimeter fan up on top here. Now this is the only thing I don't like about this case. Why didn't Antec also make this a 120 millimeter fan? Because this will suck out more air than these two 120 millimeter fans here can pull in or, or blow in to the case. So instead of positive air pressure in the case, or neutral is what you want. It creates, if you're using a top fan plus this fan, especially if you're using this one too, well actually if you're blowing that into your graphics card, that might help. It might compensate for this being a larger fan. But if you're not using this fan here, but you're using the top fan and the rear fan, it creates negative pressure airflow, which you don't want. You want positive airflow pressure or neutral. Okay. So if you are going to be using a 140 millimeter fan up on top, plus the 120 in the rear here, I do recommend also installing um, an intake fan here, so that you have more air coming into the case than what's being expelled, creating positive air pressure, and that's what you want. Plus this intake fan will be blowing air across your process, uh, the graphics card to help cool down that, that graphics card, you know. Um, but what I recommend doing is I recommend having your two 120mm fans up front, the intake fans, right? Do not install a top fan. In fact, I'm going to remove that fan. Don't install the top fan. Have just the one exhaust fan in the rear. Don't install a fan here. And you'll see why in a moment when I open up the case. But if you do this, you want to install uh, this kind of a cooler right here over your processor. You want to install that kind of a cooler. And have it set to where the fan that's on this cooler is like this. And it's blowing the air through that tower, right? And this fan has helped sucking that air out, that, that hot air out. So this way you have two 120 millimeter fans for your exhaust, because this will, will become an exhaust fan. And you have your two 120 millimeter fans here as your intake fans. Still creating slight positive pressure, and that would be a good build, especially if you're doing Windows XP, which is what I'm using this case for, for my uh, the ultimate Windows XP computer build series of videos, which will be coming up next. I just want to show the case first. So, yeah. <clears throat> All right. So, when we come back, um, we'll take a look inside the case. Um, let's remove the side panels. It has these nice, big thumb screws. They're not captive, but... They are a pretty good size. The, the, these, uh, the thumb part right here is larger than the smaller ones. Yeah, never use a screwdriver to tighten these up. Tighten these up only by hand. Because if you use a screwdriver on these, you will very easily strip out these holes, these threaded holes. Trust me, I know from experience, because I've done it myself in the past. 
Okay, so. <clears throat> and he, I think just, just, it like is hinged. Okay, it's like you got a slot here, right? That fits into this rounded part. And then it closes in and then you screw it in. So that's that. Um, let me move this over a little bit. All right, I'm going to take off the other side as well because I want to show you the back too. Um, okay. Again, it, it's hinged. Okay, so you swing it out. Like that. Okay. Um, it has a um, it has installed in this case um, one of these here. I don't know if that comes with these cases or what. If that's like a universal back plate, um, but. I have my own back plate that comes with the mullet board that I'll install in here. So to make sure I don't forget, um, I'm going to go ahead and pull this out to make sure I don't use this back, this back plate right here. I don't really need that one. So um, well, I can throw out the box with the other stuff and keep all that stuff together. I'll show the back first. I'll save the inside, this side for last because there's a lot to talk about when I show that side there. Okay, over here we've got a little box that has um, your standoffs and your normal, your normal size screws. Okay, that's what's in that bag. And then you have these huge a bag full of these huge um, thumbnails. You got those. Or, or thumb screws, whatever. Finger tight screws, whatever you want to call them. You know what I mean. <laughs> so put that there. And then this paper right here, it's just like some kind of... What is this? Um... It's a versatile corrosion in inhibitor. I guess it's to keep the case from rusting or oxidizing. So I'll put this in the box. Alrighty. Okay, so. Um, the back part of this case. Okay. It does have, and there's not much room for cable management back here, but it does have room to put your, at least your power supply cables, you can tuck them here. You can put some of your cables here. Um, so you can do some cable management with this case. The, the antique cases were one of the first cases to offer, you know, start offering cable management. So, yeah. Now for the other side, which is, we have a lot to talk about on this side. A lot to talk about on this side. <clears throat> so, get a little bit closer, you can see it. Um, I'm going to remove this top fan. I won't be using a fan up on top here. I'm going to be removing this fan because I'm going to be installing some beautiful, well, I'll clean that up later on. But I'm going to be installing some beautiful um, green LED case fans in the front and in the rear here and on the uh, probably this, the cooler because I'm going to have like a nice like a I'm installing a Cooler Master Hyper 212 EVO but it's the version 2 one. 
and that one, and it comes with the clip, so you can use any fan you want. So all four of my fans will be a beautiful green LED color, and even the fins of the fan, fans are green. So they glow a beautiful, like, NVIDIA green color, you know. So, yeah. Um, I was surprised. I went on YouTube last night, and I typed in to the search bar, um, green LED fans in PC case. I typed it in different variations of that, like PC case with green fans or whatever. I typed in different variations of that. And I was very surprised. I only found one video where a person was using green case fans. All the other videos were basically non light of fans, RGB or red colored fans. Some of them had white, a few of them had blue. But nobody was using green LED case fans. And I thought, well, okay. Then that means that's a rare color. People don't use, for some reason, they don't use green fans. I will. Because green is one of the main colors of Windows XP. And this is going to be the ultimate Windows XP computer. So, yeah, green LED fans, plus the main, you know, the graphics card that I'm using in this computer is uh, an NVIDIA graphics card, a very powerful graphics card. <clears throat> it, in fact, it is the most powerful and the best graphics card that you can use for a stable Windows XP computer build. And we'll be taking a look at that card in uh, this upcoming Windows XP build series of videos. Okay, right here you can mount up to three five and a quarter inch drives. I'm going to mount a Pioneer DVD drive up here. Um, of course, I'm going to have my two 120 millimeter case fans right there on the front, and they'll be blowing air. I'm going to put a Seagate hard drive here and another Seagate hard drive right here, basically in the middle of the fan of each fan so that it's blowing the air, the cool air, over those mechanical hard drives. I don't use SSDs. I do not recommend that you use an SSD in a Windows 98 build or a Windows XP build. Yes, you heard that right. Don't do it. Stick with mechanical hard drives. They work the best in these legacy PCs. Okay? Now, uh, um, one of the main reasons why I don't like SSDs is because they don't last very long. Okay, They're cheap to produce, they're low quality, um, they have a very high profit margin. So of course people want, you know, the, the, people, the manufacturers and the people that sell these SSDs, they want to push you toward SSD. They want to get you away from using mechanical hard drives for two reasons. Mechanical hard drives are higher quality. Therefore, they have a much lower profit margin. These people don't make as much money. Also, mechanical hard drives last four to five times longer than an SSD. So you're not going to buy a mechanical hard drive as much as you will an SSD. The average life expectancy for an SSD is one and a half to five years. That's it. You'll be lucky if you get four or five years you know, of use out of, of an SSD. The average life expectancy for a good quality mechanical hard drive like a Seagate is 20 to 30 years. Yes, you heard that right. They last a long time. Especially if you have them set up in this situation here where you have them behind large 120 millimeter fans that are constantly blowing air across the surface of those hard drives dissipating that heat from those hard drives because otherwise hard drive, mechanical hard drives run hot. And the hotter they run, the noisier they get. The higher pitch that whine becomes. And those of you that still use mechanical hard drives, you know what I'm talking about. Okay? The cooler the mechanical hard drive runs, the quieter it runs. Remember that. Um, Antec was the first company that offered the power supply on the bottom of the case. It was the first company to offer that. And then all the other case manufacturers followed suit. They copied Antec. In particular, this case in particular. This case was designed 
for, I mean, with mechanical hard drives in mind, okay, whereas all modern cases, they're designed with solid state drives in mind. That's the, and, and also for cable management, because most computer people today, they're puffed up with ego. They do stupid things like water cooling. You know, you don't need water cooling. You never need water cooling in a computer, ever. Okay, I've been building computers since 1981, you know, so I know what I'm talking about. Okay, um, RGB is not needed. It is nice. I have RGB in my Pentium 3 build. Um, and also, I have, I'm going to have RGB in my Windows 11 build that's coming up later on uh, this summer. Um, so, I don't really mind, you know, the RGB too much. But, I don't like the way the modern cases, they turned the hard drive bays 90 degrees for better cable management so it looks better you know puff up that ego boast that ego 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 squirt 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 you know but so it, it's it's not good for mechanical hard drives okay it's not good for mechanical hard drives because when the cage is turned like this then this side of the cage is facing the fans, is blocking the air from going from flowing across those mechanical hard drives. Okay, so and you don't want that. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, Antec was the first company that offered the power supply on the bottom of the case. This case in particular. And this case, the ANSI 300, was designed with mechanical hard drives in mind. Okay, so th that's why I say that this is a perfect choice for a legacy PC build. One of the things I was thinking about doing is having my Pioneer DVD drive um, okay, let me put this like this, right, put it like that, okay, one of the things I was thinking about doing, and you guys let me know in the comments if you want to see me do this, um, what is this, I know I'm a perfectionist, I'm sorry about that, having my Pioneer DVD drive up here, right, and having a SATA power switcher either here or here, probably here. And then installing two Seagate mechanical hard drives, right? One will have Windows XP Professional on it. The other one will have Windows 7 Professional, 64-bit. Windows XP will be 32-bit. Now, Windows XP will be the main operating system that I use on this computer. But sometimes... I like to use Windows 7 64-bit because I have programs that require a 64-bit version of Windows, like GZ Doom Builder, uh, the program that I use for creating maps for GZ Doom, you know, Z Doom and GZ Doom. I'll be doing a lot of that now on this computer. Um, anyway, let's take the front cover off. Let's take the front cover off. And the way you do that, um, there is tabs right here on the bottom. You want to be careful when you push these, because you don't want to break these, these tabs. Okay? You don't want to break them. Okay? And then once you release those tabs, okay... It's, it's hinged. Swings out like that. It's like, it's hinged. I don't know if you can see that, but this part is like hinged. Okay, and these, just ever so slightly press them. You don't want to break these, these little tabs right here. That's the only thing I don't like about this case. They should have made those metal clips that are screwed into the plastic, like pla big heavy-duty plastic posts with metal clips, sort of like the old end light cases. Those were really nice cases, those old beige end light cases. And those of you that have used 
the old days of NLAC cases, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, it does have a dust filter um, right here. It's a dust filter. You remove it by carefully you know, moving these tabs over and it pops out. Now, I'm going to remove this dust filter. I don't like dust filters. You think, what? Hans, you're, you're now going crazy. No, nope, I don't like dust filters. And I'll tell you why. Dust filters is for lazy people that don't want to take their computer out uh, twice a year and use an air compressor to blow out the dust. Okay? That's for la dust filters are for lazy people. And dust filters actually do more harm to your computer than good. They actually trap the air because they trap the dust inside this filter, which restricts the airflow. And I like nice airflow on my computers. So I will be removing this dust filter when I get ready to build my Windows XP computer, and I'll be putting this dust filter in the box. I will not be using that dust filter. Plus, you can see these lines going across here. From the other side. I don't want to see that. That will, um, that will block the view of those beautiful green RGB fans. These lines, the bracing that's going across like that. You can see that from this side. I mean from that side there. And it looks ugly. That's another reason why I'll be removing that dust filter. You guys let me know what you think about that. Should I do that or should I leave the filter? But by removing the dust filter the computer actually does not get as dusty. I found that out. And it's more it's it's easier for you to blow out the dust out of your computer. I usually take my computers out uh, the first part of um, the fall, first month, uh, first week in fall and first week in, in spring, and I use an air compressor to blow out the dust. That's how I do it. Do not use canned air. Don't use canned air. Okay? Don't do it. Get yourself, you can get a three gallon air compressor complete with um, a 20 foot hose and a rubber tipped spray nozzle for around $150. That might sound like a lot, but that'd be the best $150 bucks you ever spent for your computer. Because think how much you pay for each can of compressed air, and it's not really air. It's very weak, doesn't work as good as an air compressor, and they don't last very long. They're like $8 a can. So figure, I mean, just imagine how much money you've spent through the years, through the decades, buying that compressed air. You could have bought yourself a nice air compressor. And that's what I recommend to blow out the dust, you know, from your PCs. All right. So let me put this over here on top of the box. All right. Let's take a look at the front in front of this. Um, yeah, take a look at the front of this. And this is really cool the way Antic did this. They have the big large thumb screws here, right? And they're captive thumb screws. Then this hinges out like this and it comes off. And then you screw your fans inside here. Okay? Um, you screw your fans on inside here, right? And then you put this um, back on like that. And see? Oh, yeah, this is really cool. I've never seen any other case with this like this. This is so cool. Just like that. But, oh, the other thing I need to show you, let me take this back off. Okay, if you notice, there's an oval right here. And the edges have been folded over so it's not sharp. But that's where you route your cable from the fan, from each fan. It goes through there. And it's big enough for a Molex connector, because some of them have Molex connectors on the end. So those that even fit through there, too. And the same thing is down here. So, yeah, it's so cool the way they did that.
But now you see why these cases are highly sought after. This is a perfect case for a legacy PC build. So if you want to build yourself a Windows 98 computer, and especially a Windows XP computer, this is the case for you. Right here. This is the case for you. Really nice case. Now this control, see this is your, this is the reset switch, this is your power switch. This is the, the switch that goes bad after a couple of years, you know. These, you can purchase these by themselves and they just pop on, they clip on. And then they have your wire on the other side, so you can replace the switch when it goes bad. Don't think that you have to throw away the whole power, I mean the whole case just because this power switch went bad. No, you can replace those. Okay, and you don't really use the reset switch. I rarely ever use the reset switch. Okay, so if you needed to, you can remove this power switch, put the reset switch over there, and use it as your power switch. You can do that too, because they're both basically the same thing. They're reset. Uh, they're uh, momentary contact switches, is what they are. So yeah, but yeah. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for my upcoming uh, Windows XP computer series. I think you're really going to enjoy this series. Um, at the risk of sounding egotistical or bolsterous, I think my upcoming Windows XP series of videos will be the best on YouTube. Um, I'll be covering a lot of stuff that no one else has covered. Stuff that needs to be covered. Okay. Um, I'll be talking about a lot of things um, that no one else is talking about. And those of you that are building Windows XP computers, you need to know this stuff. Um, I have been building PCs since 1980, uh, 1981, the first two PCs that I ever built, uh, they were both based on the Intel 8088 processor, which is an 8-bit Intel processor. Just to give you an idea of just how long I've been building PCs, I've been working with computers. So I have been building computers and working with computers way before Linus Tech Tips was ever created or even thought of. Way before he was even born. Um, so, yeah, when it comes to building computers, I do know what I'm talking about. And, um, and you're going to realize that as you're watching my series of Windows XP videos. You're, you're going to realize that because you're going to learn some stuff. You're going to hear some stuff. That's going to make you, what? What did he just say? Yeah, because you never heard this stuff before. Um, I posted a video on my YouTube channel about choosing the correct LCD display for your legacy PC and whether or not you should use a CRT or an LCD. In this video, I also talked about the four different time periods for PC gaming. And I also talked about frames per second. If you have not watched this video, you really should. It is one of the best videos you'll ever watch on this subject. And at the time of me posting that video, it was the only video of its kind on YouTube, making it a YouTube first. Okay, um, and by watching that video, you'll better understand a lot of the stuff that I'm going to cover in my upcoming Windows XP series of videos. So you really need to watch that video. I highly recommend it. Anyway, that's it for today's video. It's been a while, I know. A lot of you have been emailing me saying, Hey Hans, when are you going to put out your next videos? I mean, God, you haven't put out a video in like a couple of months or whatever. Oh, don't worry. Activity is fixing to pick way up on this channel, and you're going to start seeing a lot of videos, both on hardware and software. 
And for those of you that are mainly interested in vintage computer hardware, well, I got some videos coming up on vintage computer hardware and software, so don't worry about that. I got you guys covered too. But I thought for the next, I'd say around 20 videos, um, it's going to be about legacy PCs, <clears throat> or PCs in general. Because it's going to take about five or six videos just to build the ultimate Windows XP computer. It's going to take that many videos to show you how to build this computer. Then it's going to take at least one video to show you how to properly install Windows XP Professional and all the drivers and the updates and the service packs. That's at least one video. Then after that, I'm going to show you all of the productivity software that I have for Windows XP, and I have thousands of dollars worth of productivity software that will only run on Windows XP. It will not run on Windows 7, 8, 10, or 11. Okay? Um, and then after that, I'll be doing videos on um, what I consider to be the best games from the Windows XP time period. And that's a lot of games. Because you have to understand, the Windows XP time period is from 2001 to 2014. That's a long span of years. Think how many games came out during that, what, 13-year period? A lot of games were released for, during that Windows XP time period. Now, another thing that I want to talk about, in fact, I'll mention it here in this video. I've been watching a lot of videos lately where you guys are showing uh, PC games being run on Windows XP in 2020, 2021, 2023, and you're getting, you're wondering why you're getting such a low frame rate. I'll tell you why, and you'll better, you'll better understand this by watching that video that I posted that I recommend that you watch. The reason for this, the reason for the, the slow, the low frame rate and the stuttering and the jittering is not the game. It's, it may not even be Windows. It's the fact that you're using the wrong monitor for those games. Games from the Windows XP time period are meant to be run on a 17-inch, 18-inch, or 19-inch monitor with a 5-4 aspect ratio and a screen resolution of 1280 by 1024. This is the monitors, this is the monitor that those games are meant to be run on. So of course, if you try running these games on a modern 16 by 9 1080p HD resolution monitor, oh yeah, those games are going to choke at that resolution, at that aspect ratio. Because they were not designed to run on monitors like that, at that high aspect ratio of 16 by 9, and that high resolution of 1920 by 1080. That's way too high for the games from the Windows XP time period. So if you want, if if you're going to be doing videos where you're showing games running on Windows XP, you need to run them on the correct LCD which is a 5-4 aspect ratio monitor set at 1280 okay, by, 10, uh, by 1024, which is the native screen resolution for a 17-inch, 18-inch, and 19-inch 5-4 aspect ratio monitor. You need to show your videos on such a monitor. You need to do your tests and your benchmarking on such a monitor. Don't show them on a modern-day 1080p monitor at 19, or was it? 16 by 9 aspect ratio? No, that's not a fair comparison. Okay? That resolution, that aspect ratio, 16 by 9, is meant for modern PC games. That's also why you need 60 frames per second. I explained this better in that video that I suggested that you watch. If you have not watched that video yet, you need to watch it before watching my Windows XP series of videos. Okay, that's it for this video. Um, my name is Hans George Campbell, and until next time.